theme of today's kids coaching clinic is family and the importance of family in getting people into the game. If we take Joe Root now, he's a product of many influences. Family, first of all, I remember a picture of Joe Root in his cot, in his cradle with a bat in his hand. Sheffield Collegiate, his club that his family were very involved in. State school for a while, private school for a couple of years. First class cricket, obviously, through Yorkshire County Cricket Club, as well as his, his own drive and determination. How do you measure the importance of family in all those influences? Are huge. It starts with someone, it starts somewhere, it can't be coincidence, and you're going to list the names of people, you know, we've got Chris Broad and Stuart Broad, Butcher and Butcher, you know, throughout, it does come from family, not necessarily the only way, there'll be people you'll name that just have it from, they pick up the game for themselves, but you can tell from Joe Root, not just it's been instilled in him about the game, but also the love of the game, you know, there was a lovely photo the other day of Michael Vaughan giving him a trophy or whatever, and a smile on his face not just for the trophy but for his hero Michael Vaughan being there giving him that trophy and I think to this day we see with Joe Root that that is undiminished in any way that he the initial bit from parent and family but that love of the game that they also instilled in him is absolutely vital and that keeps him going well it, it's steeped in your family mm. obviously your father played a test match here in 19. 79, only one. He's one of the, the one cat wonder men. But not just your dad, his brother, Ian, played. Yeah. Your brother, Gary, played. So it's there. It's just in the family. Absolutely in the blood. Um, you know, I, 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 my first memories are of being at this ground. You know, it looked very different back in, what, 1972. Uh, but my mum bringing me up here in the pram and I kind of just grew up around cricket and cricketers. So it was kind of, it never occurred to me that I'd end up doing anything else. Um, and I think, you know, if you look at the, the at sort of even club cricket, cricketing families in, in the professional game, it's always somebody. There's always a connection there somewhere in club cricket. You look at all of the all of the club sides in the country. There'll be fathers and sons who have perhaps played with each other. Um, you know, the, the family, the, the the parents have a have a big role to play in bringing the youngsters through. It's just that's part of the reason. You know, you talk about the documentary there. Part of the reason, perhaps, why you know that we've discovered as to why the, the numbers of, of black cricketers have dropped off is because that love of cricket that came with. Uh, the, the, the parents coming over from the Caribbean as the generations have gone by has kind of diluted and dissipated and that, that love has gone into other sports like football and there are economic reasons for that as well but family is just so key in this game. And you had it on tap in the, in the Hussain uh, cricket school in Ilford? Yeah, and even before that I was obviously born in Chennai Madras at the time and so I used to go down very young with my dad and my brothers to the Chepok Stadium where they now play the IPL games and my dad used to hold up the bar and tell him stories about how he got 12 for Tamil Nadu one day or whatever. Me and my brothers used to just play on that outfield. So me, when I go back there, you know, that MCC is a different MCC. It's the Madras Cricket Club. And it brings back a whole host of memories. Then you come to the Ilford Cricket School and you just live in that Ilford Cricket School. So it wasn't that my dad played the game. He was a facilitator. He set up the game for me. The rest is up to you, son. We actually shouldn't forget the role of grandparents. We had a nice video in here. It was sent by Joshua Rowan, who said... Arlo is being given a uh, wicket-keeping practice here by his granddad. Often parents are working, and the role of grandparents, how did that play out with you? Yeah, well, my, my granddad um, on, my, on my dad's side was a, was a terrific sportsman. He was offered terms by Crystal Palace right. back in the 50s, and there was no money in the game then, so he decided to go into a profession instead. And my grandmother, again, was, was so enthusiastic. She used to coach cricket herself. She coached men's teams, boys' teams and girls' teams, drove us around the country when my, my mum was uh, too busy with, with my younger brother or siblings to, to get us there ourselves. So the enthusiasm ran right the way through the, the family. On the West Indian side, the Jamaican side, it wasn't so much cricket, it was more music and, and style and fashion. You know? <laughs> what happened then? <laughs> well, exactly. I don't know why. I, I obviously just wasn't watching and listening by then but you know that, that all of those influences sort of play into what you become in the end don't they no matter what you do I'm quite interested by the fact that we're all products of our environment in some way shape or form we had another video sent in by Ali Crompton with a, of a lad playing in the garage and there's not much space here but he, he's got a nice you know he's, he's carved out a space in his garage and what interests me there is if he, if he develops and becomes a batsman he's likely to be playing the ball very straight there isn't he Temba Bavuma who grew up in a town 
Township in South Africa, played on the crossroads. And they always say that he's good square because the roads ran that way and good straight because on the crossroads. Everton Weeks never hit a six in Test cricket because he had to hit the ball on the ground. If he hit it over, they lost the ball. Well, I spoke to, I remember interviewing Viv Richards for, for a piece we did a couple of years back when the West Indies were over. And Viv's uh, sort of little playground um, was a case where if you hit the ball too straight, if the ball went back over the bowler's head or onto the offside, it went into a man's garden who'd cut your tennis ball in half with a machete. <laughs> but the only place he could hit it was over on the leg side, which is why he'd walk across and ping it over mid-wicket. Is there a right or wrong way? It fascinated me. We went to dinner last night. We passed St Vincent School and you, in the back of the cab, you said, oh, I got nine wickets there once and my dad complained I didn't get the tenth. No, no, it brought back some bad memories there as well. <laughs> Westminster School, I got nine for and you're sort of sitting in the car on the way back thinking, wow, this is going to be chicken tikka masala and food for the whole family when I get home. And his first comment was, why didn't you get the 10th wicket? You know, it, was like, it was a real sort of ruthless streak. Let's not forget the role of mums in all this as well. We yeah. all, always go on about dads or whatever. I've had many a car journey home where because I've had a shocking day, my dad literally from you know, Stamford or somewhere to Chelmsford has not said a word. You know you've had a bad day and your mums are there to pick you up. Your mums are there to pick up the pieces, take you to the next game. You know, do all the things that mums do for you as well. It's not just that uh, male contribution. We'll talk about your heading leanings in a, in a little while, but at the start of your journey into cricket, was your father a kind of tiger parent? Was he helicoptering in, saying, do it like this, do it like that, or did he let you develop? Well, I mean, you, you know Al, who, <laughs> yeah. who's now doing a, a very passable impersonation of Uncle Albert from Only <laughs> Falls and Horses. Uh, it, that, that couldn't be further away from his, uh, from his personality, really. He just let us, he, he, he let us enjoy it, got us bats, you know, got us bats from Slazengers back in the old days and let us go out and play never interfered, never really had much to do with it. And, of course, he was a very young parent, so he was, he was still playing his professional career while we were growing up. It was only really... Once, uh, you know, once I'd got into my professional career and even a long time after that started that we had any real relationship as far as my game was concerned. Um, and that came from me asking him. Um, he was always very wary. And, you know, and this is interesting with, with Nass, it's a very different sort of dynamic there. Nass's dad was, was very involved and very sort of, you know, would push him in the direction, whereas Al kind of just let, let us get on with it and waited for me to go to him, you know, waited for me to be so bad that I needed, <laughs> I needed his assistance. Um, and that's how that dynamic worked. Um, we talked about the kind of producing professional cricketers here, but of course we must remember that very few will go on to enjoy a professional career. And, and nobody starts out, me, most people don't start out with the thought that you're going to produce an England cricketer. You're playing mm. for fun initially, but also for life lessons. I mean, I've got a couple of videos here. Sebastian um, was a three-year-old Sebastian, and the father sent in the video said, how can I stop him having tantrums when he gets out? And we've got another one I'm hoping we can throw in. Giles Wilkes, who said, I've got my lad out at the 345th time of asking, and and there's a bit of a tantrum here when he does get out. He, dra he drags one on, or nearly drags one on, a little bit like Ollie Pope yesterday. And that is a real Hussein tantrum, <laughs> having got out. But sport is about life lessons, isn't it? We're not all trying to produce professional cricketers. We are trying to produce people who learn both the great things from sport, the joy and the kind of team spirit and all the things that come, in, come with it, but also dealing with failure, hurdles, having to overcome difficulties. Mm. It is a hard game for people who play it and for parents watching. It is. Well, I mean, you know, th those sort of reactions, uh, we take the mickey out of Nass. I mean, he <laughs> would clear the dressing room and lots of other people we play would do the same. And I went through a period where, you, where you, the frustrations would, would boil over and you just wouldn't be able to hold it in because, you know, cr cricket, unlike a lot of other sports, especially if you're a batsman, you kind of, you have a lot of deaths, don't you? You kind of, you fail so many more times than you succeed and it, it comes hard to take. Um, but as a, as a youngster, I suppose, the difficulty is, is you feel like you might not have another bat for another weekend or, you know, that your next game's lesson might be a little way away. And so it's easy for those emotions to, to, to bubble up and boil over. I guess that the most important thing, I think, for, in terms of support from, from parents is to kind of, is to, is to really highlight the, the enjoyment factor of the game. You're only going to be good at it. You're only going to want to practice it if you're enjoying yourself. And to you know. make sure that you do as many parts of the game as yeah. you can. If yeah. that is your day and you're batting and you get a ball that does absolutely everything or keeps low, 
that's your day ruined, really. And also in coaching, I like it when you have pairs cricket for longer so that it's not just your day where the gun players just bat all the way through and you're number nine, number ten, you get nothing out of the day. Whereas if you bat as a pair and you get out, we played Terriers Cup cricket and you lost five runs if you got out. So it's still important mm. that you didn't get out, but you didn't just walk off. So that balance between enjoyment, but then eventually learning that your wicket is very important. And if you do give it away, that's the end of your week. The <laughs> apple doesn't fall far from the tree. You've got quite a fiery one, haven't you, Joel? He's just coming out the <laughs> other side. He's just had, you saw him at his worst that time where he just walked off on his birthday refusing to bat ever again so he is a bit fiery we saw Johnny yesterday with the poor steward giving him a little bit of volley there is nothing wrong with and this is good for me there is nothing wrong with a bit of fire in your belly as well there's a remarkable statistic actually of all England's test cricketers and we're nearly at 700 now 10% of them have been related so the 10% of all England's test cricket is 70 or so I've, I've had a relative in the game as a test cricketer. I mean, it, it, in one way that sounds a lot, but when you think about it, think of all the father-sons combinations we've had in English cricket. I mean, you obviously, Stuart Broad, Johnny Bairstow, the Huttons, the, the Cowdries. The one I find more fascinating, it, you know, as you've got your lad through to Phil, he's got himself through to first-class cricket. It is hard enough getting someone through to test cricket how do brothers, how does that Mark War, Steve War, Chapel, Chapel, Holly Oak, Holly Oak, how do the two of them go all the way through? Obviously, they work together, practice together. Getting one is hard, getting brothers through is phenomenal. 